My name is Rebel Rouser. Rebel Rouser. What's up everybody? Welcome to Queer Girl Straight Skates. I'm Rebel and today I am doing year two of the same interview, different year, total ripoff, pretending to be Billie Eilish Rebel Edition. Queer Girl Straight Skates is a YouTube channel all about roller skating, but today we're talking about me. <laughs> but like roller skating is involved, so let's do it. Oh, by the way, it's 2021. <laughs> Year two, let's go. Today is December 31st, 2020. Today is December 31st, 2021. I am 29 years old. I am 30 years old. This is such a trip already. Ready? So my Instagram got disabled the other day, so I had a lot of followers, but now I have 3,960 on my backup Instagram. Followers. I had roughly 44,000 on my regular Instagram. That's funny, um, because it's not funny, because my Instagram got hacked twice, and it was the worst. Uh, but now I have 60,536 Instagram followers. I have 90,200 YouTube subscribers. <laughs> Last year I had 50,000, like 100. Yeah. Wild. Super wild. The YouTube analytics app. <laughs> Oh my gosh, what app do I use the most? Maybe it's Instagram. I don't spend as much time on the YouTube analytics app as I used to. I think I was kind of obsessing over numbers for a while there. I honestly don't even use Instagram as much as that. Maybe TikTok. Maybe TikTok is the app that I use the most now. <laughs> Probably estrogen. Yeah, I think it's still estrogen. I don't have very many famous friends. Maybe Courtney Shove. <laughs> Doing the collaboration with Moxie and naming the Rainbow Riders, and then being able to do all the marketing and giving away 10 pairs of skates. That's so wild that that was the biggest thing in my career back then. Um, wow, yeah, I mean, that was a big thing. It was a really big thing. I think the biggest thing in my career would probably be being hired for Disc Oasis because uh, that really changed a lot of things for me and it was like someone took a chance and hired me to be a dance skate performer when I literally didn't know how to dance skate so that was pretty big uh, it was also pretty big that Forever 21 hired me to be part of their pride campaign this last year and it wasn't even just for being a roller skater it was just for being gay that was pretty cool my family is most important to me right now. Um, shove my dog. <laughs> that was such a short answer. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that what's most important for me right now is trying to make sure that I am in a good place mentally. Uh, I have struggled a lot over the past year. I've had a lot of ups and downs when it comes to my mental health and also just trying to make sure that I'm not super overworking myself all the time, which puts me in a really bad spot. And so making sure that I'm taking the correct moves forward uh, and making sure that I'm happy or like on the right path, that I feel like I'm on the right path because if that's not good, then I'm not going to be able to do what I want, which is to prioritize my family and, you know, I don't know, I guess. Yeah. Yes and no. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm successful. <laughs> um, I guess, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I was referring to back then, but, um, I definitely do think I'm successful at what I do. What I do think I struggle with is 
I spread myself too thin and I try and accomplish too many things. So while I'm super successful at the things I do, I think I could be more successful if I focused my attention to a few things instead of trying to accomplish so many things. So whereas I do think I am successful, I think that I could be more successful and I think that the success looks different to me now than it did a year ago and I think it will continue to look different because I think that you know I don't know really what I was thinking about because I wasn't very clear but um, I think in my career you know I could figure it out I think I'm not fully successful yet but working on it and I think I'm successful in my relationship and um, yeah I'm successful enough. If I was to continue consistently making YouTube videos and um, not just making YouTube videos but really helping and giving back to the community, that would be me being successful. Well, I mean, I did continue to make YouTube videos and I do feel like my YouTube videos are literally created to help the community, so check. Um, <laughs> I think there were some times when I struggled with making the time to post or to make a video because I was, I took so much on and I gave myself grace in those moments and I wasn't so hard on myself when I missed an upload or I uh, uploaded late or something like that and I feel like that actually makes me more successful than just posting every week is actually giving myself that grace. I think that makes me successful. I think in order to be successful in the next year, what I need to do is I need to find a career and stick to it. <laughs> that is that I think that's what I need to do. I think that it would be really successful if I was to be able to buy a house uh, with shove, like to own something. I think that that would make me successful. And I also think that uh, success for me in the next year looks like me being able to prioritize my time so that I can actually dedicate a significant amount of time to building up ideas that I've had but I've put on the back burner because I'm so busy just working a bunch of jobs. I get recognized pretty often in public. I think that me and Shove are a very distinct looking pair. And so, yeah, I mean, we got recognized. I got recognized the other day on 4th Street and I got recognized in Michael's. So, pretty often. We don't go outside very often though right now, so it's kind of weird. <laughs> I never leave the house anymore. So, anytime I leave the house, sometimes I get recognized. One time, when we went to San Francisco this last year, we got recognized, or I got recognized, then I brought Shove out in like literally the middle of California. Like we were stopping at a McDonald's and someone recognized us, which was wild. When I do go outside, I get recognized pretty often, but it's definitely like only people who are skaters. <laughs> like if, if you're not a skater, you do not recognize me. But yeah, so pretty often. But also, again, I do not go outside very often. I should, future self, go outside more often. The vaccine for COVID and um, also the mutated strain of the virus entering Colorado. So the biggest thing in the news right now uh, is unfortunately still COVID and another mutated strain. So not Delta, but Omicron. Omicron? Omicron? I don't even know. Um, yeah, so that's in the news right now. And uh, a another big thing in the news is that, like, Biden isn't canceling student loans, which I would like him to. And, yeah, a lot of people are getting COVID. Pretty much everyone is getting COVID right now because of the holidays. So that's in the news. Fun. The biggest rumor about me is that I am the most famous YouTuber and that I make all sorts of money from skating. And that is just very not true. That's a funny rumor. I think that's so funny because it's definitely not true. Uh, I don't know that there's like any specific rumors about me right now. I think 
more or less, I spend a lot less time on the internet reading things like that. So if there was a rumor about me, I don't know about it. I know that there are people who like have all sorts of weird thoughts about me and Shove and the way we talk to each other on skate date, like going both ways. And I think that that's really funny because it's like, you don't know our relationship, but you know. When uh, everything went down with Planet Roller Skate and and it was, it was, it was super rough. I had a lot of people coming after me and um, yeah, it was not fun. Yeah, that was not fun. Uh, that was really hard. Uh, I've definitely gotten past that, which is really good. And I think because of that, I learned a lot, but I'm glad that that is not something I'm experiencing any longer. I think the, the lowest point of this year was when I broke my leg. Uh, I broke my leg in January and shortly thereafter entered one of the deepest depressions I've had for the last 10 or so years and it was really rough. I have not been stopped from skating before like that, and I, ha I think I had finally gotten to a point where I was really like using skating as a good coping mechanism, and then when it was just fully taken away from me, I entered a, a place that was very dark, and when you break your leg in the midst of a pandemic and you aren't like showing up or or people can't come and help you it just can put you in a very very dark place and that is the place that I ended up in and it was really hard to get out of and I would not wish it on anyone and I tried to take that time and create something useful from it by making like the injured skaters playlist and trying to like be a support for other people who are also going through injuries like that but it was very hard and i don't think that we talk enough about how hard it is to get injured from skating and uh, what that does to you mentally i think the highest point of the year was when we got a ramp in our backyard <laughs> I mean, that was pretty cool. <laughs> I just feel like I did not take this interview very seriously last year, so I'm going to make up for it now. Uh, the highest point of the year for me was definitely Disc Oasis. Uh, I loved working there. I have not been filled with that much joy for a really long time. I can't believe I'm about to cry. But, like... I just felt like it awakened something in me that I didn't even know existed, which was so cool. And I think going from such a dark place that I was in, like I was in such an incredibly dark place in the beginning of the year, and then finally finding something that like gave me real joy. And it was right after I had just gone to San Francisco with Shove and I had just smashed my teeth in, which was also another incredibly low point in my year because not only did I smash my teeth in and now I have four fake teeth in the front. In fact, I'm watching this video and just thinking, wow, her teeth are so nice, which is annoying. Uh, but like, I got a bunch of hate after that and like I literally got like a death threat and like people telling me how ugly and terrible I was and how I was like ruining some kid's life when like I got snaked from skating and just it was so bad and so negative and it was just like it felt like it was just like dumpster fire after dumpster fire like it was like 2021 was literally trying to take me out and all of that happened and it just felt like it was building on itself and I felt like I literally felt like I couldn't smile for real like that everything that was happening just was weighing on me so heavily and so I think that's why like thinking about Disco Oasis like I literally feel like Disco Oasis saved me like being there one it forced me to leave my house which I had not been leaving my house Two, it forced me to like actually talk to people and make friends. 
Which I hadn't been communicating with my friends and I hadn't been like making any new friends or anything. Mm -hmm. And three, it forced me to get back on my skates and try something and try hard at something and work really, really hard at something. And I found this joy in dance skating and I found this joy in the people that I was with and it was life altering. So much so to the point that like when it ended, I literally cried like a little baby. <laughs> like I was devastated. It ended early and I found out it ended early. You would have thought that I was like, <laughs> that something absolutely terrible had happened to me, but I was just so sad that it could possibly be ending. But yeah, it was definitely the highest point of my year. It was freaking awesome. I loved it. girl interrupted. I don't know. I mean, that's been my favorite movie for a long time. I don't know if it's still my favorite movie. I really liked the new Cruella movie. Like I really liked it. Really, really liked it. And Cruella has already been one of my favorites like forever. I love Emma Stone. So maybe I'm going to say the Cruella movie is my favorite right now. Go to the skate park early, early, early in the morning with my skate friends and just, you know, like spend all day at the skate park. I'm not doing that right now because of COVID, but that is my favorite thing to do skate wise. Okay, that's still really, really fun. And I agree with her, but also it's not my favorite thing to do anymore. I do really like going to the skate park, but I really, really like going to the rink. Uh, I really enjoy dance skating. So I really like going to the rink. I really like dance skating with people or just practicing dance skating especially like practicing spinning and just practicing and learning new moves and like learning choreography and stuff. All of those things. Those are my favorite things to do on skates. Pink. Yeah, my favorite color is definitely pink. Can you tell? I think a lot from myself. I feel a lot of pressure to be perfect or to uh, achieve some sort of creative masterpiece with everything that I make. I used to feel a lot more pressure from within, just like be a good example and role model. And I struggle with that pressure and balancing like just being myself. But I think that there's this conception that being a good role model means being PG all the time. And so I, I struggle with that. Yeah, I don't care about that anymore. Uh, I don't feel any of those pressures. I think I, I cared a lot more about social media and I cared a lot more about like how people perceived me a year ago. I think today a lot of the pressure that I do feel is more or less pressure to make sure that I'm actually accomplishing the, the things that all of the jobs that I've signed up for require. I think I feel that pressure a lot. But other than that, I think pressure there was a lot of pressure in this last year to be like a successful mm -hmm. skater that is booking gigs and all of these things and I know that throughout the year I there were several times where I felt like I wasn't meeting that standard like that I wasn't doing as good as all the other skaters who were out there trying to book gigs and I just realized you know whatever like who cares uh i think that at this point i feel pressure from myself to find a balance in my work life balance like work the amount of time i spend working and the amount of time i spend by myself and with my family and doing things that i want to do i think that's the most pressure that i feel right now and just the pressure to kind of pick a career path because I don't know if y'all know, but this last year, my career future was kind of pulled out from underneath me. If you wanna know more about that, you can go ahead and watch Skate Date where I talk all about my career. Um, but yeah, so I feel pressure to figure out what I'm doing with my life, but yeah, that's about it. So no big deal. <laughs> Go outside and never go in the house. Like literally never stay in the house and enjoy every spare moment. No. Okay. That, yes. But also a year ago, 
I was the biggest stress case. I had so much on my plate. It was so overwhelming. I was having mental breakdowns like every month and it was so negative, like so toxic on myself. And so if I could say anything to myself back then, it would be that working your butt off all the time is not worth never being with your family is not worth having mental breakdowns like just get rid of one of those six jobs like one of them get rid of it and don't feel stressed about it like money is not worth it oh my god i'm literally talking to a year ago two years ago technically self but i'm literally talking to myself today uh yeah that's pretty good advice old rebel um or a young rebel I should probably do that yeah that's good advice thank you my advice for myself a year ago would be to just have your journey be your journey like I definitely spent a lot of time a year ago comparing myself to other people and I also was very goal oriented like it was just like you'll reach this amount of this level of achievement like maybe i was trying to get a certain amount of followers or i was trying to book a certain number of gigs or i was trying to you know do x y or z accomplishment and i think that that was kind of you know making up for a lack of some like positive feeling i was feeling in my own self and in my own mental health and you know since then i have started therapy since then i found out that i have adhd which explains so much of like the goal issues it explains so much of the like the therapy has helped me so much with like dealing with my mental health and stopping myself from being just completely closed off to everyone and closed off to even feeling emotions and just having walls up so I think that, you know, I would just tell myself like, yo, you have ADHD, like go ahead and get medicated. <laughs> That's what I would tell myself a year ago. In a few years from now, I hope to have a house. I would love to own a house. I think That's like my biggest dream. Uh, I hope to be creating something that is giving value to the skate community. I want to be constantly finding ways that I can, I don't know, like bring the community together and whether that's through rollouts or through these videos or through, um, you know, giving things away, I don't know what it looks like, but I just, I want to be not only someone who is, demonstrating of what the community stands for but also I want to be a role model like someone that shows people like hey if you're fat or if you're queer or if you feel awkward or if you're weird like there's a place for you here I definitely feel like that second half I feel like I'm doing that I do feel like the videos that I'm making I'm actively thinking about how they're gonna help the skate community as opposed to just like making videos for the sake of making videos and for that I'm really proud having a house is still one of my biggest goals <laughs> clearly I already said that but I really 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 want to have a house I it's just one of those things that you know you don't think you can ever do and I've made that goal for myself and I really want to accomplish it in the next couple years or the next few years, I hope to be engaged slash married. I hope to own a house. Um, I hope to have a, a second dog. I really want another little baby dog. And I hope to have a career that I feel confident in, like putting my heart and soul into. I would like to just have one job or two jobs but maybe one that would be nice and like a, a personal like my own business on the side so like i started queer girl straight skates i created my own llc this last year but i want it to grow into something that you know provides some income for me that actually pays some of my bills i think that that would be really beautiful and amazing and i would like to create even more on top of that 
and turn it into something that is not just helpful to the community but also is supporting me as well. The skate community is amazing and I love the skate community and we've grown so much in this past year and while I think that that's really amazing I think that there are a lot of other things that go with that a lot of growing pains and I feel like within the skate community there's a lot of misinformation that circulates especially now that everyone just sees each other online and I really struggle with that especially when you know what's circulating is misinformation that questions me or questions shove and I I guess that's like part of being a figure within the skate community but I don't know. I think that once we're able to all get back together face to face and go skating together, I think that there will be a lot more unification underneath our values. And I really look forward to that. Yeah, I mean, ditto. Next year, I hope to do a bunch more cool roller skate skate park tricks. <laughs> right now, I definitely feel like I've kind of been a little stagnant in my skate park journey and I know part of that is because I haven't been going to the skate park because I'm trying to be safe as possible but also I think I play it safe and next year I'm looking to not play it safe anymore and I'm hoping that I can get people to come and teach me things and then also to teach all of you things too. Oh man, that really is a goal that I still have. Like I really want to do that still. I still want people to come and teach me things so that I can make those videos and like teach you by proxy. But my biggest goal now I think is less about skate parks even though I do have goals at the skate park. I think I'm a very eclectic roller skater meaning I do lots of styles of roller skating and I don't really just hone in on one. So I would say when it comes to all the different types of roller skating, I have different goals within each one. Like at the skate park, I'm really working on sliding. I'm learning different tricks. I just got like wide trucks, so I really wanna try doing like grinds and stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to dance skating, I'm really trying to learn like more dance skating moves. It's so hard. I really want to get toe spins down. I really want to be really confident in any spin that I'm doing, really. I just got Vanathane wheels. I'm like working towards being more slidey, like I want to do slidey moves at the rink. So that's really what I'm focusing on right now. And... That's, yeah, I mean, I have lots of goals for skating and I wanna skate more often because I didn't really skate that much this last year and I think that there is so much more in store for me and I'm excited and that's how I feel about roller skating right now. In the next year, I would really, really like to create a mechanism that allows me and Shove to take all the things that we do and travel with it. Like a little ball that holds like skate date and suns out buns out and the queer cheers to the queers roll out and maybe the queer prom like all events that, and like takes that and encapsulates it and like allows us to do that in different spots. I don't know what that means. But that's what I would like to create in the next year's skate ways. Ugh, depression. <laughs> um, God, I, I really struggle with feeling like everything is meaningless. Poor girl. Yeah, yeah, I do struggle with that. I struggle with everything being meaningless. And I do struggle with depression. Right now, I think that... I, the, I'm struggling less with just depression and struggling more with my mental health kind of going haywire. I think that since I started doing therapy, I have started to realize just how messed up my brain is. And that's hard because I think for a lot of years, I was just so closed off to myself. Like, I never... I always said that like I don't I'm not emotional like I don't have a lot of emotions or I would say that like 
everything was great and I'm fine and like I handle everything really well. But I think since I started therapy, I started to recognize the signs that I'm not doing well, you know, with everything that goes on in my head. And so that's been a really hard realization because you feel like when you're doing therapy, like everything gets better, you know, and, and you think like, oh, everything's gonna be so good. But when you start therapy and then you realize like, oh shit, like, what I'm realizing is actually I'm just really messed up in my head and I gotta work on that. It's really hard. So recently I have been kind of going in a little circle because I tend to mask all the things that are going on in my head with just doing things and overworking and being a workaholic. And I've been trying to fight that because I don't want to be that person anymore. So that's what I'm struggling with right now. I think that whatever you're doing right now, you're doing great. And I really hope that you are not focusing on things that don't matter and that you're really focusing on making moves and doing things that will fulfill you creatively and will help other people around you. Also, are you engaged yet? And I hope that you are making sure to prioritize your mental health and your family above anything else. Well, I'm on my way to that one. <laughs> I'm working on it. Uh, yeah, wow. This girl, she's acting like she knows me or something. God, she really nailed me this year. Frick. Um, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. How does it feel to be read by yourself? <laughs> like what? Uh, yeah, so I would, yes, thank you, young rebel. <sighs> okay. God, I'm so emotional right now. Okay. I hope that you are in a spot where you're able to take all the things that you feel and turn them into something productive and that you're actually taking action on the things that you want and the things that you know you need instead of just being scared and holding yourself back because I know you're capable of it and I know you can do it and if you're not doing it do it <laughs> also are you engaged yet? Cause I'm still not. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> but I have a promise ring, it's really cute. I think I had the promise ring last year though, so. Okay, so my predictions for next year are that me and Shove will get a cute little house and we will, it will be so skatey, it'll be like the skatey house and it'll be so cute and queer and I think that I will finally figure out what career path I want to be on and I will push through and start doing it. I think that I'll go back to Disco Oasis. I, I do think it's gonna happen again. I think I'll go back to it and I think that I'm going to create something that enables me and Shove to be able to uh, move forward in pursuing our dreams of like helping the community and making it possible for us to travel and all of that kind of stuff. I think that all of that groundwork will be laid this next year and I think that I will have a very cute shag haircut at the end of next year and I also think that I will hmm probably have discoified too many more things. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching this episode of Queer Girl Straight Skis. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope you liked that video, and I hope that you enjoyed the same interview, second year in a row, 2021 edition. I really enjoyed looking back, and I also cried a lot. So here's to another year, 2022, here we come.
If you haven't yet watched the one with Shove, go ahead and watch the video of Shove doing the same interview, different year. And most importantly, cheers to the queers!